to address a history of systemic racism and discriminatory hiring practices. In addition to filing suit in federal court, the Black Class Action Secretariat has filed an official complaint with the UN Commission for Human Rights. They're asking them to investigate and call on Canada to meet its obligation to equitable hiring practices. So the class action represents any black employee of the federal service in the past 50 years. With us this morning is Executive Director of the Black Class Action Secretariat, Nicholas Marcus Thompson. Welcome to your morning. Good morning. Great, great to have you here. First of all, what effects have the systemic issues in the public service had on black employees who've experienced them? Well, it has been significant. Um, black workers are facing a crisis in Canada's public service um, from being asked to empty the garbage when that's not their primary function, from being um, uh, told that we should go back to the good old days where we had slaves, um, from serving. Uh, I spoke to a worker last week who told me that he has served for 50 years and continues to do so in the same position that he started in. Um, we have workers who are retiring uh, on medical grounds before their retirement date. Who, they're forced to retire because of the, 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 uh, the psychological injuries they're suffering uh, with, within the government of Canada. So black workers are facing a crisis uh, within Canada's public service and nothing uh, uh, material or tangible is being done about it. And, and and those damages continue today. And the government has had data indicating uh, where black people, that black people were being excluded for decades. You mentioned in a past interview that the federal government is saying one thing in public and doing something different in the courts. What do you mean by that? Well, the government is uh, telling the Canadian public that we're working to address all of these issues and that we understand. Just recently, um, the Treasury Board said very clearly that we acknowledge these harms, that, we, that, that black workers are facing harm and that they're working to create a diverse and inclusive public service. Saying very clearly that the public service of Canada is not diverse, mm -hmm. it is not based on merit, and black workers are facing harm as a result of that. Then the government shows up in court and seeks to dismiss black workers, seeks to, um, to deny black workers the, that opportunity uh, in court to, 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 you know, to have justice. Um, it is telling the Canadian public that it is open to mediation and all forms. Um, and then it is showing up in court and saying, oh, we don't want mediation. Hmm. So it is saying one thing to the Canadian public that is politically um, acceptable, and then in court it is seeking, it, is, it has been fighting black workers in court for the past uh, two years and is finally now moving to dismiss uh, the complaint, uh, the claim in its entirety. The claim, just to bring everyone up to speed, is asking the government for several items of recourse, uh, among them including a compensation fund for employees harmed by these practices, a specific category for black employees to identify themselves, separate from the visible minority designation, a black equity commission that's charged with investigating the black experience in the public service and implementing solutions, and the establishment of a fund that is specifically for trauma counseling and other mental health services for black federal employees. How important are all of these pieces if the government truly wants to get to the root of these issues? It, these items are critical uh, in order to addressing uh, systemic discrimination in Canada's public service. Um, and, and not only for black employees, black employees are at the bottom, but it, uh, these changes also impact all other underrepresented groups. So this fight is not just uh, about black employees being left behind, it is to ensure that all of the underrepresented groups have an opportunity within Canada's public service based on, on merit. Um, so it is very important um, in terms of addressing these issues. We need to have amendments to the Employment Equity Act that is right now how it's being applied. It's excluding black workers. Uh, from those opportunities. We need to have a mental health program to address the trauma that the government has acknowledged. Um, uh, we need to have 
workers have lost their entire lives, their, their, their livelihoods. They're retiring broken, broken after serving this country for decades. So there has to be compensation for the, the loss of income, the loss of their pension. The pensions are based on their best five years. So if your best five years is at the lowest ranks in the public service, you're going to retire on the poverty line after serving Canada, uh, the people of this country, uh, particularly throughout the pandemic. Um, and, and that's where we see the systemic part of the discrimination and of racism. Nicholas, we're going to have to have you back to talk more about uh, the UN piece to all this, but it was a great conversation today. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. All right, stay with us. Lindsay is coming back. She's got Sidebar 2.0.